Hey everyone, I am so glad to be back. I am practicing um, safe distancing, washing my hands and everything. I'm even geared up to this new kind of mask, but I gotta take this thing off while I'm talking to you because I think I sound like a alien. Ooh, it's kind of cool, but my Lord. I'm gonna put that down for a second. Mm. Actually, I can take this off since we're on TV and everything, but let me cover the gray head up so I can look cooler and younger. Today, we're gonna to talk about Shelby Harris Rosebow. She's another Roseboro. Boro. Rosebow? Well, she's gonna get me right because she tells me the truth all the time. You know we're coming from Art in the House. And remember, our first project, this is the last of a six week lesson that we've all had in conjunction with hanging out over the summer and making art that we'll never forget. Um, so we made this house. If you wanna see the video, it's on the site with transitarts.com, but it was the beginning of a dollhouse structure so you can build anything you want to build. But this is my house and we're coming from art in the house to your house. So we're hanging out and making these good memories over 2020. You know, this is a real scary time and everything, but when we hang together and when we take a, a breath and relax, make art, you can get answers to life because that's when your mind concentrates and it's when you think. Today, as we start, I'm going to unroll one of these cool little placemats that was nicely made by some of the summer intensive training working artists and young people. And I'm going to lay my acrylics out because, or watercolors out, because um, I'm going to do that. And what I'm going to do is read to you a little bit about Miss Shelby. She's one of six artists I get to work with all summer. Well, it's been a few years we've worked together in different ways. But Shelby, P. Shelby, we know her as P. Shelby. Uh, Shelby Harris Rosebow was born in Columbus, Ohio on July 6, 1986. A lot of sixes in her number. Um, she's a seasoned professional with more than a decade of experience, both as an entrepreneur and exhibiting artist. Shelby is a graduate of East Kentucky, Kentucky University, where she received her Bachelor of Fine Arts. You know, all this good stuff is on the back of this beautiful drawing that I was able to do with her. And, you know, you can figure out what this is, but... Um, I'm gonna stop reading because I'm gonna let you read some more and I'm gonna tell you more about it right here as we keep going. So this is what we're gonna work on today, this coloring sheet. But let me tell you what. My grandkids came in all the way from Seattle, Kirkland, Washington area this uh, during this time. They get to hang with us and I'm gonna show you a picture of them. This is a shout out to little Zeke and Jayla, my grandkids. Yes, I got you on film. And I hope I don't embarrass you because you know, you guys are growing up and getting where you tell me how you really feel. Well, I'm gonna lay, that's who colored this. This one was done by Zeke. I like his bold colors and his style and his attitude. He's very, very creative. And this one is done by Miss Jayla. And she wrote Jayla, the 22nd. And she wrote when, getting ready to spell Wednesday because she likes to keep details, records. She's in the program, believe it or not. And Zeke wants to build, he wants to build race cars. I think it's race cars, some kind of cars but he's gonna build them, that's, some, that's a secret right now, but only you guys know. Um, I'm gonna put that down and I'm gonna show you some more stuff. You know what, um, I got a few little bit of, since we're all like family, you know, you can get the history of people, but these, all these artists are still alive. And usually we talk about an artist when they're finishing with their life's work and they are gone and we all look back and say, oh yes, she did this and he did that. But we get to live with each other and tell the story now, living artists, that haven't gone to that next place in life yet. So what I'm gonna do is show you some pictures because it's like they're my family. It's family from the East Side Canon. It's what, we, what I've been doing ever since I came into the art scene. I'm gonna tell you something. I haven't told you guys yet, but uh, when I was younger, I told them I was gonna be an artist. My mom said I would probably never make money. And my brother said that everything that has been done has been done already. And they said, well, I had to live in New York to be an artist. And I was a stubborn little kid in a sense. They said I was shy, but I wasn't shy. I was waiting for answers. And I remember thinking, one day New York's gonna come to me. And secondly thinking, well, maybe everything's been done, but I haven't done it. So what I'm saying is, you have inside of you a dream. You have inside of you a talent. You have inside of you a will, and you have inside of you all kind of things, untapped potential. And so that was my little spiel today because every now and again, when I go messing with other artists or making stuff about other artists, I investigate and watch everybody overcome something, some kind of fear, some kind of struggle or some kind of thing. But Shelby today, I painted her or drew her in the sense of 
a woman carrying the torch because she wants to connect just like the rest of the ladies, art to family, to culture, to, to, to community. And she's all about the community. And, she, and this program is a program of the community. And hopefully I'll be able to come somewhere around the state, wherever you are, and we'll get to hang out, make art and do shop talk. Now I'm gonna show you a few other pictures. This is the actual photo from the background drawing of Miss Shelby right here back at Champion Middle School. And that's where you see that drawings kind of put in there. And you see some of the images that was that were used in a setting where we were making paintings and clay and stuff that dry. Um, what came out of that is a piece that we collaborated on called We Are Champions. It's a coloring book with drawings and illustrations and puzzles and things like this. We published a few, gave them to the students and teachers and we sold some. We're getting down to our last bunch. We might have to print more if we get a demand, but I want to show you this is a product that we collaborated on and did together because we were brought together by time, circumstances, and the community. It's about the Blackberry Patch. It's a place that Amina Brenda Lynn Robinson was famous for here in Columbus, and it's the Poindexter Village where they're going to make a museum. And speaking of museum, these things I carry because we were in a show that's called Preserving the Le Legacy of James Preston Poindexter. It was curated by Betty Stahl and Janet D. George. Janet D. George. This exhibit, the exhibit showcases me and a few other artists and I and Shelby was in it. So I'm so glad to share our history with you. One more thing. There was an outbreak of broken windows and stuff in Columbus for social justice. And we had an opportunity to work together. And we painted a mural at Ohio Theater that has, I'm gonna flash a few pictures before you because I think this is just a little bit of information and it tells us who it was, it was three of us. Shelby, me, and Francesca, calm free. So I'm what they call, they, I'm calling myself Art with the Wart. And this was the final verbiage that went along with this big mural that was out there. And since we were, we were fighting social justice with our paintings and this is her and her boo, yes. I won't say his name yet because, you know, I just call her, her boo. And um, if you don't know what that is, we'll talk later. But um, this is one more picture of the final part of the mural. It's a long mural under the historical Ohio Theater in Columbus, Ohio on State Street. And we would do that one together. And so one more picture I'm going to zoom in with you and then we're going to get straight to painting. Well, maybe two more. And this is another mural that was done on High Street. And it's all about celebrating life. And Shelby is known as Peace Shelby, the new piece to 2020. She's a very like, she's a graphic designer that loves to make graphic images connect people. And a painter and an artist and a writer and she's always doing her thing. So this is not one in the, the fifth one you've seen in this series, a painting of Shelby that's still not finished. It will be completed. It's surrounded by the Sankofa bird. And um, I'm still, it's still in progress. So they haven't seen these things. These, they're being done first on the video, then shared. Oh, ah! www.oaae.net. That site will have the drawings you can download. You can get the, the verbiage. And guess what? Since you're gonna be learning online, you can go to these people and do some reports on them, the other artists in Columbus. So we're gonna get right started with watercolor. We're gonna put Ricky aside and, oh, this is my son and his wife, Sierra and the grandkids, I'll show you one more time. Jay and Zeke, shout out to the family. I uh, can't wait to spend time with them this weekend. Um, do some, some, good, some good food. Now, what I wanna do is remind you, I'm doing watercolor painting and I'm gonna put these aside so you won't be distracted. I'm gonna also keep one of these that won't be painted, you know, and I'm gonna look at this. And I'm gonna calm down just for a second. When I say calm down, I'm gonna think just for a minute, how do I wanna paint this? Do you ever ask yourself questions like, how should I approach this? Or what I, how do I wanna go about it? Sometimes you know, sometimes you think, sometimes I overthink, but what I'm gonna do right now is grab me, myself, my paint brushes, bring them a little closer to my reach, and um, whoops, put my finger in the paint. You know, that's a kind of fun, but not what I wanted to do. I'm gonna put a little bit of water on this table, and I'm actually, since I did that, I'm gonna like tap it up with some finger paint. You know, I'll put some yellow across there. I want it to echo down through the picture. I'm gonna let the orange touch it. And you know, our fingers are special things. Like some people paint with their fingers anyway. I'm gonna use, I like Shelby's 
bluish color. I want this blue color in here. I'm gonna just start. Sometimes I don't know where I'm gonna start. I don't know how I'm gonna go, but here I'm going. You know, sometimes we gotta get up out of our bed, put our feet on the ground and just move. Because the more we think, the less we move. Some people try to live in your head when they say, what are you doing? How are you gonna do that? Ah, oh. Questions come at you and you don't know which way you're gonna go. And you feel like you gotta give answers. But you know what? Don't be pushed into being rushed. Don't rush life. Take your time, take your time. They say that to me over and over again. I can hear my wife say, slow down. She calls me Rick. Slow down and breathe because you think and talk way too fast. It's actually a song from back in the day. Slow down, you're moving fast. You gotta make the moments last. Feeling groovy. I think the Beatles or one of them guys did that. Now, my reason for colors aren't like everybody else's. I just feel like red goes right here inside the Sankofa bird. That's a Adinkra symbol, a Adinkra bird from West Africa. And it's a symbol that's used all over. And the bird symbolizes returning to our past or our culture or the people that we forget. And Shelby, I'm gonna paint her blue. Well, that's too much blue, but I'm gonna add more water and let the blue come through because Shelby is a true blue torch of torch with a, a flaming spirit full of concern, passion, and the things that we need. And the reason why blue, if you ever look at a fire, blue is like the hottest spot on the fire, I think. And they, it's the closest place to the warmth. Sometimes we refer to the passion as fire and passion is very, very hot and very intense. And so Shelby, you're gonna be blue and green because green is gonna be coming down here. Now, the cool thing about watercolor is you can wash it, you can thin it, you can let it dry. But be careful if you pick it up while it's wet or if you start having a tug of war, you can tear it so easy. But if you let it dry, and if you don't rub the paint too hard, you know, and you just chill out, chillax as someone said, and let the colors just evolve in your hands. Sometimes gr green is like a peaceful color or it's a foundational color or it's just, it's a cool color. And today, I don't know why, but I'm feeling green and blue. Maybe it's because I have some fresh vegetables that I can't wait to get home and cook. But whatever it is, I'm gonna play with this yellow that my fingers got all in and come back around here and keep sliding yellow all around. This one feels a little bit joyful. You know, I wish I could sing like it sounds in my head because sometimes I could hear the song so clear and so strong, like joyful, joyful from Sister Act and uh, hitting them high notes and the sisters and kids and everybody just humming and clapping. But when I sing it out of my mouth, it don't sound like I'm singing in my head. So you're not gonna get tormented with that right now, but if you wasn't here, I'd be singing loud, making noises, because, <laughs> you know, when I paint, I hear the colors crying out saying, I wanna live in the moment. And, um, and I know some of you understand that, so I'm not gonna try to explain it anymore. I'm just gonna tell you that sometimes I feel like the colors cry out, say, pick me, let me live. Sometimes we're like colors. We want to be in a moment. And here we go. So I'm gonna, like when I paint toward the edge and pull the color back in, it gets intense and it gets, it gets intense, it gets strong, it gets vibrant, it gets muddled out, it gets a whole lot of things. I'm gonna come over here a little bit more with this orange, cause I think down here, I'm gonna move some circles around. Now this is just a little wash color. You can do it really fast. But if you take your time and play with things and learn the the give and take of the exchange of of being, you know, trying and blending. Look, see, I'm taking some of this blue and going over to green where it's wet and just, it has like a nice exciting feel. And I pull some inside her shirt and then, you know, every everything looks different. When this dries, I can come back and I think this, this, this Sankofa bird right here, 
I like the way the birds are all going. They're singing, they're connected, they're moving. They feel harmonious, harmonious, harmonious. So I'm gonna I think I'm gonna stop right here. Let me just let me just close my eyes for a minute and stop looking at everything. Just stop for a minute and try to open my eyes afresh and look at it fresh. Okay, when I look at it fresh, this one bird right here feels unfinished in the tail. So and I think I want it like a uh, I want a different color that I don't see or a different tint or hue. I know those words might be new to you, but you're gonna be using them as you keep living. This has a little white in here. And I think if I put some of this red and white together, I'll get this kind of like, I don't know what color this is. It looks kind of a little bit of purplish mauve or something, I don't know. You can tell me what you think it looks like because I don't know what you see on that screen you're watching on. But you see how this color right here comes in here and works with that orange and it just feels a little finished. And I'm gonna put it in the tail because the tail of the bird is back here. And I'm gonna pull it back behind her face so it separates her. And right now, I think I'm gonna use it like a wash in her face so they don't have to all be brown today. Um, I'm playing with the blue colors and stuff. So I'm gonna pick this up. First, I'm gonna put my water brush in the water so it's clean. You know, you take care of your studio. Your area is your studio. In case you didn't know, your home is your studio. You're working in your studio at home and I'm gonna pick this up carefully so I don't tear it and I'm gonna show it to you. And I'm looking at it from this side, I can see the light coming through and I'm gonna turn it around and let you see that. Remember on the back is the whole story so you can, you can have work done for your school. You can turn an assignment and you studied an artist in Columbus, a living artist. And I would say she's um, a cool person. So thanks for letting me tell you my story. Thanks for letting me be in your space and look forward to seeing you soon. Goodbye.